Well, hi, AP Stats, and welcome to my house. I'm here in my dining room, and this is the, the snow day that we had in January. And I just finished shoveling, and it seemed like a good day to make a video. So today's video is going to be on something called the geometric distribution. And so you need your packet out, and we're going to work through this page here in the geometric distribution. And you're going to find that this type of problem, they're very similar to the binomial ones that we just did, just there's going to be some slight differences here. So read along with me as we look at the problem. So we have a large fish tank, 30% of the fish are male, and a customer wants a male goldfish, so we're going to scoop in with a little scoop, and we're going to keep on doing that until we get a male goldfish. And the question of interest is, what's the probability it takes five scoops until we get a male goldfish? We might fail a couple times, finally get that male goldfish. Now what I don't have here is I don't have a fish tank. What I do have is poker chips. Ugh, this is heavy. So I filled this up with poker chips that are going to simulate my fish. And hopefully you can see here that there are two different colors in here. I have black chips. These are going to represent the female fish. There's 70% of these. And there are red, gold, uh, red chips. These are going to represent male goldfish. And these are 30%. And I just need you to trust me that I did count these out. I really did count them out. So it's 30%, 70%. And one other thing I need you to do is suspend your, uh, use your imagination a bit. I only have a fixed number of chips in this bucket, but I need you to think about a population that is large, where it's 30% male and 70% female, and apply that to what we're doing here. So the idea is, how long would it take me to get a male fish? I'm going to dive in without looking, and first time I reach in, I get female fish. No good. I reach in again, and ah, got my male fish. So this time it only took me two trials. To do it. Let's mix them up a bit. Pretty loud. Reach in. First one, female. Next one, female. Next one, female. Hopefully, it doesn't take 12 trials. Next one, female. Next one, female. Next one, female. And then, female. And then, female. And then, female. Hey, there we got it. We got a male. So that took me, let's see what I got here. I got one, two, three, four. That took me nine trials that time to get a male. So this one's going to have a lot of variability to it. But you should see some similarities and differences with this, with the binomial stuff we just did. So thinking back to binomial, the things that make binomial, a binomial distribution, a binomial distribution, there's four things. First of all, you have to have success failure every single time. You have to have a fixed number of observations. You have to have independent trials, independent observations, and you have to have, one last thing, uh, a constant probability. That's for binomial. Those are the four things you need to memorize for binomial. Which of those is the same in this geometric probability and which ones are different? So let's go through them again. So did I have, let's go to the beginning again. Come on, fingers. Boop. Okay. Do I have success and failure? Well, yeah, I have male fish and female fish. So this one is something we need. Do I have a fixed number of observations? That's what's different here to geometric. The first time I did it, it only took me two trials. The second time I did it, it took me nine trials. So the number of observations, not fixed. Do I have independent observations? I do. Every time I reach in, I have a 30% chance of success. And do I have a continuous probability? I do, 30%, 70%. So if you look through your notes there, it says we have a random variable x, so it's a geometric distribution. And here come the notes and the things you have to fill in. Um, each, of our, each of our things falls in just one of two categories, success or failure. Okay? The probability of success is the same for each observation. We have constant probability. Uh, probability of success is the same for each observation. Uh, the observations are independent of each other. One does not influence the other. But the one thing we do have to add is this time, the variable of interest is the number of trials it takes to get the first success. How long will it take us to get our first male fish? Okay, so if we do all that, we want to do the probability distribution. So the probability distribution here, I kind of have all laid out already. So if we let x equal the number of trials, what does it say here? Number of trials to get a male goldfish. I'm going to set up my probability chart. x is the number of trials, and I want to do the probability of x. And I've set it up for one, two, three, or four. But what's different here geometric is this could really go on for a long time. It took me nine the one time. So we're only going to do the first four or so. Well, think about it. What's the probability I succeed on the first trial? 30% of them are male, so the probability that it takes me just one trial is 30%, 0.3. What's the probability it takes me two trials? Well, that means that I would have to fail the first time and then succeed on the second time. That would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.3. 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, you can verify in your calculator, is 0.21. So the probability it takes me two trials is 
0.21. What's the probability it takes me three trials? Well, I would need to fail the first two times, succeed the third time. 0.7 would have to happen twice, 0.7 times 0.7, and then a 0.3. So the calculation there is 0.7 squared times 0.3. Get out your trusty calculator. I'm cheating because I have the answers written. You'll see that that comes out as 0.147. And you can do it for 4 and for 5, and so on, so on down the road. I'm going to do it for 4, and then we're going to stop the distribution here. Uh, but for 4, that means I would need, need to fail 3 times, and then finally succeed. So I would need 0.7 to the third power, and then a 0.3, that would come out as 0.10, if I read my notes right, 1029. Okay, I'll hold that up a little better so we can see it there. So I would need a uh, 0.7 to the third power, and then a 0.3. I know my numbers sometimes look pretty sloppy. But the deal is, notice what's happening to these numbers. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It could take me five trials or six trials. These numbers would get lo lower and lower and lower. And in theory, this thing never ends. They just keep getting smaller and smaller. So we'll never ask you to write out the whole thing. We'll just write out pieces of it. So this is the probability distribution. Okay? So now, given that X is, has a geometric distribution, and we have a probability of success P, and a probability of failure 1 minus P, the probability we succeed on the first trial. Well, that means that we need to fail a whole bunch of times and then finally succeed. The formula for this is... The probability that we um, succeed on the nth trial means that we need to fail n minus 1 times and then finally succeed on the last trial. And that's really what this means. It's a pretty complicated looking formula, but it's not that bad if you think about it. I need to fail n minus 1 times and then finally succeed on the last trial. And that's the formula for this one. So in our, in our problem we have there, what's the probability it would take me five trials? Well, I can use the formula here to do that. The probability would take me five trials, means I would need to fail four times, then finally succeed on the fifth one, and I can just multiply those out. So the calculations are not that bad here. Okay, so this is the formula for geometric distribution. Kind of feels like binomial, just a little bit different. Okay, almost near the end. A couple other little formulas we have to get to. Mean and standard deviation. We always want to know the mean and the standard deviation of these distributions. These are two formulas you're just going to write down and have to know. We'll develop them in class together. But the mean of a geometric distribution is simply given as 1 over p, the mean of x, x the number of trials we need, 1 over p. So in the one we just did, if p equals 0.3, which is the probability of getting a male, we do 1 divided by 0.3, we get out our trusty calculator, we see that comes out as 3.3 repeating, 3.3-ish. Okay? That's the mean formula. We don't have a formula for standard deviation, but we have a formula for variance. Here's that formula. A little more complicated looking. I'll be totally honest. This is not one that I memorize all that often. 1 minus p over p squared. But again, if 30% of the fish are male, this just means we're just plugging a number in and chugging. So if p equals 0.3, we can find the variance by plugging in that 0.3. It comes out as 7.78. That's the variance. It means to get the standard deviation, we have to square root it. You should get 2.8. And I hope you verify those things in your calculator. Okay, so we have mean and standard deviation formulas. Last piece. Last piece, what's the probability it takes me more than five trials? Not exactly five, not six, but after five, some point after there. What is what is the probability it takes me after a certain point? Okay. We have a formula for that as well. So think about it. If I wanted the probability that it takes me more than five trials, that means I need to fail five times, and then after that I don't care because at some point I'm going to succeed, but I need five failures. And that's really what the formula is here. The probability that it takes us more than n trials means that we simply have to fail n number of times. And at some point after that, we're going to succeed. Okay? Let that marinate a little bit. And we'll do some examples like that in class. That one sometimes seems a little bit funky. If you think about it, it just means that we have to fail a whole bunch of times. Unfortunately, most of these problems are predicated on failure. So last example, what's the probability it takes me more than, uh, your example says five. Uh, I actually have seven here. So you might want to change your notes there. The probability it would take me more than seven trials to get a goldfish. It took me nine the one time. The probability it would take me more than seven trials just means 0.7, my, my failure rate, to the seventh power. That comes out as 0.082. Okay. This is the geometric distribution. It's a little bit different than the binomial one. The binomial one will be the master of most of what we do. The geometric one is going to be kind of simmering in the background. And that's it. Enjoy the snow, and we'll see you back next week.